An art movement is a tendency or artistic style that interests and influences a number of artists at the same time. Art movements are usually popular for a certain period of time and often overlap. Art movements are particularly important in modern art. Can a building have a sense of humor? To construct a building, whether a dwelling, workplace, school, or museum, takes a team. There are suppliers, construction workers, and engineers. But before they can start their jobs, there needs to be a plan. That's where architects come in. Some of humankind's most recognizable icons are realized through architecture. These structures mark the achievements of a culture, or sometimes show their vanity. But can architecture ever be funny? Although many cultures have what is known as their classical style of architecture, in the West, that generally refers to principles derived from ancient Greece and Rome. Stone and concrete were their main building materials. Columns, arches, and domes are recognizable elements that originated in this classical style. The architecture we usually associate with China originated during the Tang Dynasty. Using wood as the primary building material, Chinese architecture features the use of open courtyard spaces, bilateral symmetry, and roof tiles. It often includes decorative features that allude to astrology or mythology. Chinese architecture influenced much of the architecture of East and Southeast Asia. The Mayan civilization flourished in what we now call Central America. Mayan architecture is recognizable by its stone construction and carvings. Like the Chinese architecture, it often has astrological or mythological aspects to its decoration. It is one of many cultures that made pyramids as part of their ceremonial traditions. Gothic architecture originated in southern France and was the dominant style in Europe from the 12th through 16th centuries. Although it derived from Romanesque architecture, the Gothic style was based on the arch, the rib vault, and introduced an engineering innovation known as the flying buttress to support buildings from the outside. This style of architecture is seen in many churches and cathedrals throughout Europe. The mathematical harmony found in much Islamic architecture reflects the Islamic ideal of the harmony of the universe. Some innovations of Islamic architecture are the minaret and multifold and vaulted arches. The use of geometric patterns, intricate carvings, and calligraphy as decoration on many Islamic buildings give them an unsurpassed visual richness. Italian architects in the 15th century began to reintroduce elements from classical architecture in their buildings. This was to show that their culture was also guided by high ideals of truth and beauty like ancient Greece and Rome. By the 18th century, architects refined this use of classical elements in a style that would become known as neoclassical. This neoclassical trend spread to many countries as European influence spread throughout the world during the 18th and 19th centuries. This neoclassical architecture is often seen in government buildings or banks as it projects a certain air of power and wealth. Towards the end of the 19th century in Europe, artists, architects, and craftspeople wanted to bring aesthetic beauty into all aspects of life and erase the boundaries between art and craft. Rejecting the rigid rules of classical form, these architects turned to nature for their inspiration. A new style, an Art Nouveau, arose which used natural materials and emphasized curves and other organic forms. Catalonian architect Antoni Gaudi was the leading proponent of the Art Nouveau style. In France, just before World War I, a new style of architecture and industrial design known as Art Deco emerged. Influenced by Islamic and Mayan architecture, Japanese woodblock prints, ancient Egyptian art and modern painting, this eclectic style was characterized by bright colors, geometric patterns, 
glass and ceramic decorative elements, and innovative lighting schemes. Now let's see if we can answer our question. Can a building have a sense of humor? In 1929, when the stock market crashed, many people lost their fortunes, jobs, and homes. This, combined with a devastating series of dust storms which ravaged American and Canadian agriculture, caused a worldwide economic depression which would last nearly 10 years. As part of the recovery from this Great Depression, President Franklin Roosevelt instituted programs that provided jobs for many Americans. Known as the New Deal, these programs put many Americans to work building roads and bridges across the geographically large U.S. These new roads beckoned tourists. Due to a growing economic recovery, travel by automobile was becoming more prevalent in the United States. Looking for ways to attract this new throng of motorists to their shops and restaurants, business owners employed architects to make unique buildings that would also act as advertising. Often employing humor or visual puns, this style would become known as novelty or kitsch architecture. Novelty architecture generally takes two forms. Mimetic architecture incorporates elements in its design that mimics things like animals, coffee pots, or even hot dogs. The other novelty approach is to reproduce other famous or fantasy buildings, like the Great Lighthouse of Alexandria or Camelot. Exaggerated and oversized sculptures are often incorporated as part of the overall design scheme. Although originating in America, novelty architecture has spread to many other countries. Due to their unique look, these buildings often serve as landmarks and tourist attractions, especially in small towns. Unfortunately, with the advent of modern freeways in the U.S., these roadside attractions no longer had a large audience, and this style of architecture became itself a quaint novelty. <laughs>